Welcome to the Off the Road Again podcast. I'm Chris. I'm Ross. I'm Marvin. This is our show about anything and everything off-road. Tonight, as always, we're socially distanced. I don't have my show notes up on the corner, even though I've said this a million times already. It hasn't been a million times. It's only been like 196 times, I think. Um, or less. I'm in the Midwest, Ross is in the Northeast, and Marvin's in Atlanta. So like, it's kind of a an East Coast heavy show tonight. Atlanta, yeah. um, but definitely not Atlanta. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Me, north, and, north of Atlanta. <laughs> we're going to call it Atlanta adjacent. Yep. <laughs> Go to Atlanta adjacent. Fair enough. Fair um, you, Ross, you have, what is RC? Yeah. Only, only... My only update for you was that image that you sent me the link to. Oh, the um, truck. Yeah. So I mentioned this on the show. Um, a few weeks prior, uh, the guys at RC four wheel drive, they make scale rock crawlers, uh, you know, remote control rock crawlers. They sent me a C two X to play with and review. And I've been dicking around with it. Um, the thing is awesome. Wow. And they actually sent over some scale rock sliders too to, uh, to line the body. <laughs> So it's uh it's getting pretty oh, nerdy over I, here, but it's I gotta stop awesome. sharing because I gotta see your. They really are like tiny little rock sliders. They really are they are. metal? Yeah. It is metal. Yeah, they have like meat <laughs> to them. But the truck too. The truck weighs ten pounds. You know, like it's it's not like a little hot like Walmart thing. It's like full hobby grade stuff. They're and, really nice. I have one here on the shelf from them too. From they're really RC four wheel drive. Yeah, it's it's pretty freaking cool. This is my first like deep dive into the you know 10th scale crawling oh but man it's a rabbit hole let me tell you it all is <laughs> it really silly is it really world. is it really is a rabbit hole it's so much fun i love it i i got a whole collection here i was saying how many does what it else? take to be a collection <laughs> Oh my gosh, you don't want to know. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, you, you I think three. Yeah. No, wanna... it's, it's more than ten, actually. So. Oh, right, right. I know, but like oh, three's the minimum oh, yeah, to be collection. collection. Yeah, correct. I'm up to four. I, ha- I have at, at ten. I think Marvin's a plethora now. Like, yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> that's a that's a good. None of them run too, so all of them are. Don't they just need batteries? No, that's not true. Yeah. The one you on the shelf is brand new. That's never everything okay. that's been, that that ever ran is now broken. But the ones that have never ran are still intact. So let me say it that way. <laughs> it's a little that's lower so consequence great. in life to have a uh, an RC not running than it is like your actual, you know. Vehicle. Yeah, no. Ever right. since I moved, we moved into a new house a couple of years ago, and like I don't know, the RC stuff went into one corner, and I never mm. put it back out. So mm. I, I, I will one day. I will. I, yeah. Definitely, it's fun but... you know it's like i mean i've been on a trail with the trucks and there's guys walking the trail with their scale crawlers that is my you so know? like i we, me and my buddy uh talked about that we uh, that i i want to at least fix up one properly and just carry in the back of the jeep you know That's for example we have so much downtime in between where somebody broke or something's going uh-huh. on Lunch? just have something to, to play around with so that's definitely on my radar to make that a thing mm-hmm. and to have a dedicated yep. trail RC car that I take with me just to mess around. And yeah, it's, it's, it's such a slippery slope though. Mm-hmm. I mean, there was this guy one time that looked at us in the trucks and was like, I got less into this thing than I got into your tire. It's like, yeah, fuck. But you know, it's like, it, it's uh first is free. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, absolutely. Free. Yeah. It's really what it is. <laughs> It's really what it is. Oh. So, anyways, thanks to uh, thanks to Luke and uh, and Mike at RC Four Wheel Drive, and I'll get some pictures of this thing bolted up at, and uh, I'll your, try to drag your it over RC some rocks. rock sliders. Yes, <laughs> RC rock sliders. It's Dude, that's fantastic. So, Chris, suburban. Cool. Uh, suburban's being weird. Um, it's not. It's not bad, but I can definitely tell like something in the front end starting to not function the way it's supposed to. Um, obviously with brand new tires, I got a, a set of Michelin Defender LTX MS2s on the front. Big fan of those. They've done been great in the snow and I've been playing around with them in the dirt recently and they did everything I needed them to do. I am not an extreme rock crawler or extreme off-roader. I'm just more of the like, let's go tool around on the fire roads and stuff like that. So for me, the tires are perfect, but the road noise that I was experiencing before is back from okay. with the, mm. the older tires that I had. So, which makes me start to think wheel bearings. Interesting. And or, do your best impression just, of the noise for us. 
it, it's not no i'm not gonna be that guy that's, that's what brian regan's for i don't yeah. oh my god i wish i was good at tiktok and i could stitch in brian regan, regan jokes right now yeah, but right? Uh, i'm not yeah so it's like um at lower speeds i can hear it's like a hum but it's like a, it's definitely rotational it's definitely as like the vehicle slows down i can hear it more and as i yeah, speed up it kind of goes away could very well be wheel bearings definitely yeah. Uh, I may have watched a couple of YouTube videos on wheel bearing assembly or uh, yeah, wheel hub assemblies. Just like it's, it's caliper good. off, rotor it's off. Not, it's pretty straightforward. Yeah, as long as it's, it's not, not a like big a deal. What, what what year suburban is it? Twenty seventeen. So it's oh okay. And how many miles are and, on it? And is this the original set of front wheel bearings? I have no idea. It's one hundred ninety four one hundred ninety four thousand miles now on a twenty seventeen. Okay. From what I can tell. Every like forum or Facebook group or everything, GM made these trucks to be freaking disposable. They yeah. are not That's what GM does. Absolutely. Yeah, they but are still, not. I mean, you can still like you can you can like that should be an easy fix. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're not the Toyotas or the old Lexuses that I'm used to of <laughs> just like oh I'll put something on no. here and I won't yeah. have to touch it for two hundred thousand miles. Like no, it's like every fifty to seventy thousand miles something else is is going wrong and. <laughs> Uh, Ross, I don't think we've talked about this because, uh, you know, I track my mileage every year. Mm -hmm. I did 22,000 miles on the Suburban last year. It's pretty good. Which is, it's I work from double, home. Yeah. The, oh, true. Yeah, that's a lot <laughs> considering that. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So that's the part yeah. of, of having relatives in Colorado. And uh, my last year, my high schooler was still a freshman. And so he had to be driven or picked up from sports practices all the time. So like I was driving across town two, three, I think one time I said I did 10 trips across town, which is like 20 yeah. minutes that way, 20 minutes back. But like, but that was is, like high school sports and little league. And like, yeah, just. Is his LX still uh, pouring liquids out of places it shouldn't? Mm, I, I have the list of things I need to address on that. And I keep checking the coolant level after they uh, noted a coolant leak. And I haven't had, every time I check it, like the same amount of coolant is still in the overflow tank. How so I'm like, yeah, which I'm okay with that. I, I it's That's still, a it, problem to have. it is a known issue on hundred series, but um, um, the other thing we've run into is we've had a fuck ton of snow recently. So I had yeah, uh, about seven inches of snow today, which Hilariously, the rain that is hitting both of you guys was the same snow, like the same cell same that was dumping snow on me was all of the shit that was happening to you. Like, yeah, we are. Uh, I know people in Orlando that were like, go home early from work today because of the storm that was coming. In Orlando? Yeah, that it like, it was this weird, they had tornado warnings in I, Orlando today. There like, was a water spout in uh, Fort Lauderdale the other day, so. But yep, good stuff. Good news is um, it looks like front hub assemblies are like 75 to 100 bucks so i may, I may have been looking at cheap. some like upgraded ones do it from a certain off-road manufacturer and maybe have sent an oh. email and i'm waiting to hear back but is we that... will discuss that off the air until i actually have a commitment from them <laughs> is that the one that i think it is I have no idea. You and I have not talked in a long time. Okay, so. then maybe not. <laughs> I might have found this one on my own and uh, figured something out. So okay. Um, okay, yeah, that's it. The Sequoia is fine. That was actually that's like in the snow. That's what I like. The LX and the Suburban were parked outside, so they had the seven inches of snow on top of them. Sequoia was in the garage, so that was uh, what I was driving today, mm -hmm. running dumb errands for the kids or whatever. I saw. Um, yeah, uh, cool. play dates on snow days are hilarious when your kids get older. You're like, dude, seriously? And they're like, yeah, we want to do this. I'm like, okay, get in the truck. An excuse to go <laughs> play in the snow. Take it. In the rear wheel drive V8 powered snow. Yes. 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 The suburban maybe was side the Or the Sequoia. Sequoia. Drive train. Yep. Perk of that drive yeah. train. Um, um, and that's it right. for me. Marvin. What's up, guys? You're welcome. So <laughs> thanks for having me. I, I know a little bit about you. Uh, why you don't do. you give the audience your quick little elevator pitch, who you are, and uh, and 
the the brand you've made for yourself. Oh, wow. Okay, yeah. My name is Marvin Stemmel. I am the owner of the YouTube channel and I guess social media platform uh, Flex Forks and Rollovers. We do off-road hardcore hardcore off-road and adventure content on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram. That's pretty much the niche is uh yeah, find a good split between hardcore wheeling and adventure and uh kind of travel uh, all throughout the United States. And beyond um, to to yeah get into crazy adventures together. So we we uh, flex one of the most well known video productions that we got. I would say is uh, the twenty four Hellenbeck uh, Trail Challenge. Mm-hmm. Uh, we just finished the fifth season of it. Last video came out last Sunday. Uh, definitely something to check out. Uh, super high end production, super high action, cool characters. Yep. Uh, Highly very, recommended. Yeah, cool trails. A lot of work goes into crazy, these and... crazy trails. All right, so we'll, we'll get to twenty four Helen back. So I want to go <laughs> a little further okay, to, to set some of this up. So you said you you grew up in Germany and then mm-hmm. you know you came yeah. over here. Were you? I mean, first of all, is there like real off roading like this in Germany, or nah, is you just got into this one? I'm sure stateside. I'm hurting some German feelings. If we yeah. have German <laughs> listeners here, yeah, I'm sure we're hurting some feelings, but no, there's not. not uh, there's, yeah. uh, you know, like we, I don't know, rock quarries, sand quarries. There's a handful of small off road parks throughout Germany, but it's really not a whole lot, not on the level that we have it here. Right. Uh, and then if you look at Europe as a whole, yes, there is definitely some more. But you've got to be willing to really put some miles on you, which we do over here too. But since it's this one, everything is one country, you do it with ease. And over in Europe, everybody yeah. is complaining about a three hour drive. So if that makes sense, like over <laughs> there, like, you, here. yeah, exactly. Like over there, it's more like, like my the off road park where I started to, uh, to wheel was in Belgium. So like it was, it was a 45 minute drive. Like mm-hmm. we did that every three months maybe yeah. because it was yeah. like oh my god we get, need to pack our stuff up and whatnot it was a, it was a big trip for us so right anyways uh now we travel literally i don't know i've, I've like you guys were talking about putting a lot of miles on their cars even though you work from home same here i work from home and like my truck i bought brand new in 2015 and it's a it, it just hit 300 thousand. So, oh shit yeah. oh my gosh that's pretty good yeah it's that's, brutal that's, and i really brutal. like I spend weeks in a row at home and not leaving my office here. So yeah. I, it's really when I travel, we travel far and a lot. And uh, now for, since this year or last year, I guess, we're part, try, trying to even push it outside of the United States and go mm-hmm. other more exotic places. You know, we've done Baja 1000 a couple of times and traveled to Mexico for stuff. But like uh, I just got back from a trip to Malaysia. We did the Rainforest Challenge in Malaysia, Whoa, crazy. which was like experience of a lifetime. And uh, on Friday, I'm leaving f- to fly to Honduras to compete Ooh. in uh, a uh, in the South American Off Road Nationals. So Hold on. yeah, Hold pretty on cool. Pictures. I don't think I, I don't even know what it like. I I don't even know where where to look it up honestly, other than on YouTube. I don't know if what they have is, a website, uh, but it's a pretty. What does that entail? What is what is the a competition? I, I've got Malaysia videos. video here for you, Ross. <laughs> yeah, that right there. That works too. <laughs> That was Rainforest Challenge in Malaysia right there. Um, yeah, but like yeah, the Honduras thing is even something different. Rainforest Challenge is a, that's a whole animal in itself that I just absolutely fell in love with. <laughs> crazy, crazy. Drone crazy. Looks looks trashed. <laughs> that's just a, like a happy community video. It's maybe not the best video yeah. to show and pull up. Like that's really just <laughs> about the people, not the race. But it's a, it's a 10 day hardcore off-road competition through the jungle of malaysia during uh, monsoon season so and it's 10 days worth of like living in the jungle camping under tarps and really Mm -hmm. like really really rugged terrain and camping every night and uh, racing every single day and stay in certain stages so you travel all throughout the jungle of malaysia throughout the country and race different stages every day and it was one of the wildest things I've ever done in my life. We didn't race, I have to say, this year. We were just there for media, basically, mm-hmm. to experience it. Okay. Uh, but now we're hooked. Like, I want to... Yeah, you have to. Uh, I'm pl- currently putting a plan together on building a car here in the States to then ship ah. it to Malaysia, to then com- compete in it in 2025. That's oh kind of the idea. Be the first American... Like, this race has been going on for 20... This was the 26th year. So it's no, been going on for a long time. It's no ranked American like the, teams? 
No, never. Wow. JT Taylor, I don't know if that name rings a bell. He's the uh, race director of Ultra 4 and King of the Hammer. Yeah. He was out there and he was a co-driver one year, but only apparently for a few days. He didn't do the whole 10 days. So mm-hmm. he just like went in and out to kind of check it out. Mm-hmm. And now, like, we did the whole 10 days and, like, oh, we're shit. so hooked on this. And I've experienced from Ultra, I raced King of the Hammers last year. Like, yeah. I've done a lot of off road racing and been part of a lot of different styles of off road racing from Baja to rock bouncing to Ultra 4. Nothing ever hooked me as hard as this wow. hooked me. Like, where I'm like, oh my God, I have to do this. Like, That's it's so one of the coolest, coolest things I've ever seen and, like, more of a, it's a perfect mixture between racing and adventure, you know, yeah. and it's yeah. relatable. Like it's Suzuki Samurais on 37th. You know what I mean? We're not talking right. about $250,000 spaceships, you like know, that like those are all brings the relatable cars. On the, on yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like, so that makes it's... it really, really cool. And just the style of racing and how involved it is and driver, co-driver interaction. And just, yeah. it's brutal. It's ranked the third hardest off-road race in the world. It's in, in front of King of the Hammers. Car. And the car and Baja 1000 Baja. are ranked, but I've done Baja three times, four times actually, Damn. and I don't know if I would put Baja 1000 above Rainforest Challenge, mm. and I really well, don't know. I guess the car <laughs> is different for everybody, you know? Exactly, like, exactly. I don't know what they use to scale it at, but like I know, like King of the Hammers is on fourth place apparently, and it, I can like that makes sense. Yeah, like, it it's tracks. slightly t- like. Overall, it's definitely tougher than that. But even Baja, man, I don't yeah. know. Baja, you're done after a thousand miles. But you know, <laughs> right. you're not. It sounds brut- sounds terrible, mm. but like if you have enough willpower, you can make it through a thousand miles eventually. Ten days, like your body is so fatigued and so oh, like ten days at ninety degree weather, ninety percent humidity, like absolutely no, no wind, no escape, like no nothing, no showers, no uh, AC, no nothing. We shower in a river every night. Like, so get... is it all samurais? No, no, it's so, like, it's samurais, Toyota, a uh, couple of couple of jeeps. It depends. Okay. Like you Are see you... some jeeps. And it's like 26, seven, 27 countries competed this year. So, That's so awesome. depending on from where they're from is what they built, you know. So yeah, there was yeah. a team. Uh, that's not even part. That's, that, that? Says ofi- that says official on the side. So that's just like a marshal or something getting from A to B. <laughs> like a race car. That is a, I don't know, Daihatsu it's or a, something. It said Gurkha. Gurkha. It yeah. says G Gurkha. Force you to, Gurkha. Do you want me to throw in? Do you, if you really want to see what Rainforest Challenge is, let me throw a link in the chat, and you can, we can like skip into this. So, I've shown. Dude, there there are so many images, and they all have water in them. Yeah, yeah it's d- deep, deep it water. Like I said, it's monsoon wet. season. Like they they have been RFCs in the past that have not where it has not stopped raining in ten days. Like all ten days nonstop. Just rain, 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 rain. Yeah, I'm gonna throw a so, link in the chat and you guys I don't yeah. know if you guys can so play that even or not. Matter if you build something with a, a roof and doors and glass yeah, or to keep it... shit to keep shit out. Like okay. when, like I have videos on my on my GoPro and on my camera from this trip where they drive sections that Man, like a swamp in the jungle, like a water puddle, swamp, whatever, mm-hmm. where literally everything is moving in that water. Like oh it's what it, like, and it is deeper than the car is tall, and they drive through it, and the co-driver jumps into that and like goes diving Wait, for the wind line. You oh, know what I mean? Like, Jesus, who's uh, who's like your co-driver? Who's your co-driver huh? gonna be? That's that, gonna have I, to do I, that. I honestly think so. Me, I went over there with a really good friend of mine that is also an off-roader for a long, long time, and. <laughs> We both said we're not going to do it. Like, we need a local for that. Like, okay. I don't think okay. any Western person that didn't grow up over there yeah. has the mental capacity to do what those guys are doing. Either, like, from the physics, like, from how fit you have to be, but also there's certain situations where, like, no, bro, I'm not I'm not jumping in that water. Right. Like, sorry, Regional you, you're awareness. either going to drive this or we're going to be stuck here forever. Yeah, <laughs> yeah right. <laughs> what's, what's lurking beneath where you can't see? Yeah, I mean, and you have everything there. I mean, the wildlife in that entire, during those 10 days, from monkeys to elephants, king cobras, tigers, leeches, snakes, everything. Everything you can imagine. Yeah, that's the that's, yeah. that's the video that or, it, it originally got me hooked on it. Like that's one of the first videos that I found back in I think this is from 2016, and ever yeah. since then I've been following it and like you know dreaming about doing this one day, and it's just it's so crazy, it's so cool. 
wild. So of course, not my just... internet has decided I can't stream and upload and, and yeah. upload. Like, stream and like, watch YouTube throw, at the same throw, time. Throw it yeah. in the throw it in the description. People can absolutely. Watch it, you know, now That's it's really, crazy. really, it's a really, really unique event. Really fun, and again, like for me, just a new style. Like it. It's kind of like you hit the reset button and there's a whole new level of wheeling and mm -hmm. off-roading that you just unlocked that you had no idea about right. that existed, you know? And it's really cool. Especially because it that's seems like... -ish. That's you guys, That's a Jeep. That's a CJ5 yeah. or so. You guys seem to seek out, you know, more exploration and rocks than mud and wet. And this seems like you're you're not escaping it at all. You're, like, you know, so that's the cool thing about it, too. I'm ne I've never been the guy that... I mean, I'm not that I like... I've never been the guy that says, oh, I hate mud. I mm -hmm. don't like it. I don't like pointless mud driving where you just find a mud hole and drive through it until your car is dirty. I've never right. understood the thrill of that. Mm -hmm. But off-road competitions in <laughs> muddy trails and deep water and whatnot, that is super fun to me. Like, I don't... Like, that I never downplayed and that is really technical driving that these guys are doing you know yep. they have cutting yep. brakes on every corner they have three to four winches on each car oh they have God. rear steer they have yeah they have pto winches Oops. mounted in the middle of the car that are gear driven that pull the car faster than a fish on a fishing line what? and then 24 volt electric winches front and rear and like it's just a completely it's really really yeah. technical what these guys are doing really technical the courses are very tight very very small windows for for error it's cool crazy it's really really cool crazy. I, I think that they look like a power wheel <laughs> yeah <laughs> I mean, just, yeah so now in, power in, wheel. <laughs> in all these years no american team ever has competed in that and like we want to take that yeah. on, for on, on under our umbrella and uh yeah give it a shot and build an american car for it like build it how we would build like obviously we're going to in from the trip learn learn from what we saw and get inspired mm -hmm. by well, how works, they build doesn't. cars yeah but like i think if you we can put an american twist on it and like rock this thing so, you know and not to scoop yourself you, but have you decided what you're building announced what you're I building say what's narrow uh, enough I, uh, no, we will we will build a YJ most likely a YJ TJ okay, something like that. Like I was even thinking about a two door JK, but like something like that, <clears throat> something typical American that yep. people here can relate to. Dude, and uh, I mean, yeah, go based on it. your Jeep I don't experience fit in your, the samurai your as much as I, you know, the samurai is tiny and cool and yeah. it makes sense. I don't fit in that car. There's no Throw way. Throw a 6'4". Chevy 350 and a YJ and keep it narrow <laughs> yeah. and, and you're set. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. We see how far we can take it. Like if we get enough support from our partners to build something that is eventually competitive enough to potentially win this, mm -hmm. or if we just build something for the heck of it and just because yeah. we want the adventure. You know, I'm down for both. Whatever I can make happen this year, mm -hmm. uh, but we're going to race this with something. So that's because an XJ would be too next. long. Too correct? much body. Too much too body. Too much body. Too yeah. Much body. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, we uh, exactly. we, we saw what happens to an XJ on uh, on 24L and back. If anybody, yeah, exactly. If anybody yeah. listening or watching saw um, Rudy's poor was, was oh, it the man. Yeah. right rear glass. Yeah, the whole right corner blasted to panel. oblivion. But also the whole quarter panel in the back area, the whole right back corner is trashed. But, but that's hey, what XJs are for? <laughs> he wasn't too upset about it. He took it good. Yeah. He's a good sport. But uh, speaking of Jeeps, tell us about your Jeepster project, which has kind of become yep. the, you know, the, the image icon of uh, 24L and back. Yeah, it's kind of like my, it's yeah the flagship Jeep of the channel, I would say. Uh, it's not the Jeep that started at all. But, I mean, it was there since day one, but I built mm -hmm. the Jeepster before YouTube, way before YouTube. I didn't build it for YouTube. So, uh, yeah, that's it. It's a 1973 Jeepster Commando with a 6-1 Hemi. Uh, it's on a stretch TJ frame with 14 bolt axle in the rear, 60 high pinion in the front, uh, 116 inch wheelbase, 42 inch tires. It's built for rock crawling, trail riding, crazy adventures, and yeah, has been yeah been quite a, pretty much everywhere, every hard trail in the United States that this thing somehow fits on, it's been on pretty much. I have to say, this thing has been through a lot. Has been on, it has made it successfully 
through every single hell and back without breakage. That's broken wood. more than you can say for some of the guys that you've done once. I mean, this, after this year, I didn't even like say that out yet, but like after this year's hell and back, on the way out, the whole rear ring and pinion, everything took a, took a shit. Everything oh, broke no. over me. <laughs> yeah. But, but you were hey, done. Better... The 24 hours were done, man. That's yeah, fine. Yeah. That's freaking crazy. <laughs> yeah, once, so... I, once I went back onto like dirt road speed and started to drive, it, the noises got louder and louder and louder. Yeah. And at the end, I had to get towed back to camp. Well, it's like when you run a trail and you know you're getting towards the end, you kind of give it a little more than you did in Absolutely. the beginning and in the middle. Uh, and, Absolutely. Uh, and that's Especially, how man, we were so around. hyped. Everything on that day and those 24 hours, in my opinion, for me as an event organizer, then like went so well that I was so hyped and so pumped that I just wanted to, um, yeah, we just, I don't know, you, you, you stopped yep. caring as much towards the end because you were also full of adrenaline and super hyped. So what we, I don't think we actually <laughs> said or set up what 24 Helen back is. So this is, it's, it's what, your YouTube channel is kind of like blossomed around. Yeah, it's you know, kind of like our flagship video production. It's an annual video production that we do that is a 24 hour hardcore trail challenge. It's uh, we invite a group of people, usually around eight, uh, eight or nine characters um, that we, yeah, that we invite, like I said, and uh, then hit a trail with. We take a lot of pride into putting a lot of work into finding unique trails trails that aren't really out there yet trails that people haven't seen yet online and that are just absolutely brutal and usually mm -hmm. way above all pay grades something that is made meant for buggies and not for jeeps and we put take a team effort yeah. into, into <laughs> getting us through there yeah that takes it all that's pretty much your your mood for 24 I hours mean, straight that's this right year's there. trail did, like, oh my god did you guys like <laughs> just find this year's trail like even that it was a trail you know just yeah, before brand that, new brand, like, handful of it. yeah a handful of uh moon buggies have been up it before us that's it that's Jesus. brand new it took me it took the life out of me to even find that place i drove all across the united states and walked off-road parks and walked you know trails that i was given hints to that mm -hmm. none of them qualified until i found this little gem it's a so, freaking undertaking the images and the way you shoot makes it feel like they're RCs too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like they, they look like, like I know they're full size vehicles. Like this one has the guys in it, but like that doesn't look like a full size right? until you realize, oh my yeah. God. Yeah. That Toyota was crazy. That Toyota was inspiration for me to get one. <laughs> <laughs> I love that fair, thing. Fair. But uh yeah. but yeah, the the collection of vehicles and characters, I mean it, it spans like Go on our Flex Rock. You're on my personal Instagram page. Yeah. Right? Barely is. Go on Flex Rock's rollovers. Then you see actually images okay. from this year's. That is all last year's. Was I, it okay? I, I don't use that account anymore, really. That's like my a personal Instagram account. But Flex Rock's rollovers on Instagram, you see all the yeah. new stuff and everything. How did that? How did this whole yep. thing come about? Well, oh, man, that's a long story. But for the most part, in the nutshell, I had a I had an idea for a race pre COVID, pre YouTube. I wanted to organize a race, kind of like an East Coast King of the Hammers 24-hour okay. race. And it was supposed to be the 24 Hellenbeck Trail Rally. Okay. And uh, had this whole thing planned out and uh, kind of an idea on how I wanted to do it. And then COVID hit. I was like, well, damn, you can't have any gatherings. Like, there's no way I can make a public race happen. Mm -hmm. But you were allowed to go wheeling with a couple of friends, you yeah. know, at that point. So I was, uh, I just kind of switched it around and made it a video production and started a youtube channel and the rest is kind of history Jeez. so um, okay that's pretty much it literally just a, a like a uh, it was a plan b okay that's, <laughs> that's cool. yeah, they're, shock dude, towers <laughs> there there oh, really yeah, was Rudy. never anything like this on the east coast i mean i remember going back to paragon in like the mid 2000s and they would have like rock crawling competitions and that was as close as it got to anything like this except yeah I was at Anthracite at AOA once, and a dude backed the hammer truck out of his trailer, and I was like, "What the fuck is happening?" Yeah. He's like, "Oh yeah, I'm just I'm just getting some like you know practice runs in." <laughs> okay, but yeah, I've been to is... that to the to those places. I, the 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 first place you mentioned, uh, I've heard of. It's Rest supposed to be really cool. It, but, it uh, died. I've been to AOAA too. Have, That's a good place. Uh, speaking of brutal trails, have you seen the Mammoth Trail that they put yep. together? 
Yeah, I did it. it. I did the first quarter, I want to say, in my dad's YJ back when my Jeep was broken. I took my dad's Jeep for a rental for a while, his YJ, and then we were out there and I drove, yeah, pretty much. I think it's the first third, the first quarter, mm-hmm. hard to say. Like at some point, the owner called that they don't let anybody on this thing after three o'clock or four o'clock. So yeah. in the middle of us doing our thing, he called it and kicked us That's out. Awesome uh but yeah we made it pretty far this place it's brutal it's, it's brutal it gets hairy it takes life hair. out of you too because it's like not so non-stop and so demanding like mm-hmm. you need a nap afterwards like right. that was <laughs> yeah they they pride it on being like the hardest trail in the northeast or something like yeah. that but i don't I, I mean it's just technical i don't know like trail. this like, and it's the same thing or like it's yeah. not like you know it's cool i, I definitely say it's up there with one of the, some yeah. of the hardest trails but it's just the same thing over and over and over again it's just rock garden yeah. you know what i mean the it's entire just, time every rock moves every mm-hmm. oh god it's just it's a it's a headache <laughs> nutty looking thing to see in person yeah for sure uh what has uh what's been your aside from saying that you know your favorite hell and back is the next one which have you enjoyed actually wheeling the most mm, boy it's a tough one man because i really enjoyed all of them but i would say maybe maybe oklahoma i don't know this one now was really fun too like somewhere between utah the last one and the one mm-hmm. in oklahoma but the one in arizona was also those are my my top three and they all kind of i all like them for different reasons yeah, so the- oklahoma downhill one looked so hairy yeah that was just the scariest shit i've ever done that was the scariest wheeling i've ever done hands down like yeah. i would not do that again and i I never say really? that i'm all like there's always a way of doing it better smoother trying it again mm-hmm. that's where i have no desire of going ever going back to been there done that like that was horrible okay that uh i mean it was fun it was exactly <laughs> what it needed to be but like i it it was literally it was they're not too dangerous for what yeah. we think. That that's like uh yeah, like full buggies and comp crawlers and, that's and even it. for them like and, that's... and even for them, even those guys, like some of them say, I hell no, I'm not driving down <laughs> that. Like you know, like Oh my god. That's uh, yeah, that's not that was wild. But like now the one in Utah uh, that we just did is very similar to that trail but uphill, you mm-hmm. know? Like and right. That right. was probably also the single hardest trail I've ever so, driven, I have to say. Just for a reference point, what do you think? Because in most of the people that listen to our show, you know, 35s are like the most that a lot of people really run. You know, we know some people have 37s. Yeah. Um, but what do you think on this most recent Helen Back, the, the least aggressively built vehicle you could get through it without just literally winching? obstacle to obstacle would be like a, a I mean, jail saw, like 37s no, no no way i mean you saw even rudy's xj was on 40s on full hydro at callovers mm. and wontons and he basically winched every obstacle same yeah. with ian johnson ian johnson's yj shop truck also on 40s 14 bolt axles you know like heavily built those two rigs were were literally on pulling line the entire mm. time and like oh they were he- they're heavily built vehicles, you know, and they had absolutely no chance. Like we tried and tried and tried, especially Rudy, like Ian Johnson at least, or not at least, Ian Johnson bypassed a whole lot of stuff mm-hmm. and just drove around it and was like, I'm not even putting up with that. There's no reason. There's no point. Yeah. And he said uh, something Rudy about tried. Not and Rudy tried people. everything. Rudy drove into everything. And it was awesome to see, you know, some stuff he did make, some stuff he didn't, but the car held, held up until the end. So, but yeah. yeah. I don't know, man. It's really hard to say because, uh, you know, a rig on 40s is a rig on 40s. And right. It was really uh, It's just uh, how struggling. much damage do you want to take at that point? Yeah, exactly. But again, then you take, a let's say, a samurai on 40s. It's a whole different story. You know, that's a whole different proportion. So, like, I can't really make that down if, to tire uh, size. If you can keep if, it metal side. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, um, um, yeah, I'm crazy. sure. It's crazy shit. What a... Uh... I don't know how much more you want to talk about Helen Back or if you want we to talk about other stuff. All, all night long. You all night. Well, Dude, I'm, I'm, I'm in. <laughs> For 24 <laughs> hours of so, insane. Yeah. Lot. So uh, how do you vet the skill of the drivers? Because, I mean, we see people like, you know, Rory, who is 
the master of masters at technical yeah. driving. You know, there's videos of him literally backing up, driving up Hell's Gate backwards. You know, and then yep, yeah. the dude is, has more wheeling under his belt than I have <laughs> lived on this planet. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. seriously, and does it so, every day, and lives in like one of the off-road meccas of the world. Like, you know, like all respect to him, man. He outdrove yeah. all of us, all of us. But like, come on, man. Like, he's also he's got a lot of years on us. He has he has more experience in just simple seat time due to mm -hmm. where he lives. True. And then also some one thing a lot of people forget is he was in the middle, so at not he would have driven just as Ooh. good if he would have been in the front. But you have to understand, being in the front, you are the first one, man. Guinea you pig. don't see what anybody is. If you're yep. second, third, fourth. You learn from every rig that has gone through it. So he had time. He had three, four, four rigs in front of him, mm -hmm. five sometimes. He has he had time to figure stuff out. Yep. And then last but not least, for me, the most important argument is, bro, he's in a full tube chassis buggy that costs twelve dollars to build. That's he has true. no cares. There's that is no true. care. None of us <laughs> That's want, a good point. None Dude. of us want to destroy our our vehicle. Right. That thing, bro, like he he does he can take it's any risk. He was it the, because so the, the black and green ones, ones. Yeah. yeah, yeah, but insane. He had the, literally the I, I have the but like if you've ever seen a budget build, that's it, man. Like, you he, can't build it for less and for like with more like stone age parts. And this thing out wheeled all of us by a, by a long yeah. shot. He had the best quote, and and this is paraphrasing, but it was like the way you learn to really wheel and learn the limits of your vehicle is by flipping it over a lot, so. <laughs> That's not, but, but that's the fact. But like, and that's where I messed up by having such a nice Jeep. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, it is. It really, I, yeah. I really have. You know, like I really, I'm craving something that I can treat like that, where I don't have to care and mm -hmm. really push my limits further. I think when I first built my Jeep, my skill level was somewhere here. The Jeep was here. Okay. You know, and over the years, you start to catch up. But now I'm at a point where. I'm, I've had, I've reached the limit of limits of this thing without ruining it. Yeah. That's yeah. my point, and I don't want to ruin this Jeep. I have too much emotional attachment to this vehicle right. that I want to ruin right. it. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. But I do want to build something that I can trash on, you know. And it's definitely it happening. It's just should. like the time. It has to be has to be the right time. So, so that sounds like your rainforest truck will be the one that you just <laughs> destroy. Yeah, but it's getting shipped. <laughs> right? get, that, if that's happening, then th that truck will be will live on the other side of this planet. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? So right. like, it's not like something I can tra I can use here. Then you know I will leave that thing in Malaysia and fly there. I don't know once or twice, at least once or twice a year, and do events or you know just simply adventures out mm -hmm. on that side of the planet with that rig. Would you ever host an event not in the? continental u.s like absolutely do a 24 hour back in like Colombia or something yeah, yeah. Or i would love that see yeah not that the trust Colombia is high on the list oh man Colombia is way up there for me i love yes. Colombia, but like uh it is it's yeah maybe one day who knows where this whole thing is go taking us you know and how much in like now I'm just now diving into this international thing. Let's see mm -hmm. how people even like it. Maybe everybody's right. bored and can't relate and doesn't want, doesn't care about international stuff. And mm -hmm. then th this will die immediately. You know, at the end of the day, yeah. I'm not, I'm not here to like, then I will do that for myself, but it won't happen on the channel. Mm -hmm. You know? Well, it's so hit or miss. And I mean, just to make like a, a broad sweeping parallel, but like Top Gear had such great success with some of their travel stuff. And some of it also was kind of, you know swing and a miss so it's yep. really like the grand tour ruined the columbia episode yeah. because oh. they had all of columbia right in front of them and they wanted to make dumb jokes yeah. the entire time when like just that, that was my was I, I, i'm got yeah. the get off my lawn get old guy five for the grand tour i'm like so just good. show us the amazing places stop doing yeah. dumb shit yep yeah. That's that's what it comes down to. But like a lot of people are only there for the dumb shit, you know. They yeah. don't, that's the problem. So we'll see. I don't know. I hope it works out and we can continue this adventure and do more international stuff. I'm yep. up for it. <clears throat> that's awesome. But, um, how do you? So again, the premise of this is you got to stay up for 24 hours. So how do you mm -hmm. find yourself or if others? desperately trying to stay awake what are some like kooky never, tactics? Never, 
barely only it's only been an issue in the very very first hell and back that we did in kentucky mm-hmm. uh where we didn't know what we were doing and we chose several different trails and in between those trails were 20 30 minute dirt road rides oh geez. and that's what kills you the uh, the 4 a.m 30 minute dirt road ride <laughs> mm-hmm. that's what really gets <laughs> yes. you so so that that is what we learned then it's like as long as your adrenaline stays up and you're doing stuff yes no issue so yeah Yes, you have a dead point, but you know, rule number one: don't sit down. Like, if you, if you have a dead point, go help. Bring the camera guy yep. water. Yep. Go spot. Do something, and you're fine. And then you muscle through it, and you're okay. They we never really have issues. Sometimes passengers, you know, that are less busy and sit in the back, mm-hmm. nap for a moment. But hey, the drivers, nobody has no driver to my knowledge has ever really fallen asleep. Hmm. That's pretty impressive. Is you're, there you're busy the whole time? That's and, fair. You know, yeah. I was going to say, is there a way to prepare for just staying awake for 24 hours? No, I don't think so. And again, <laughs> okay. like, like, we've had well, this last go around in Utah, man, Thomas, our trail guide, the dreaded guy, uh, his parents were there. Like he, His parents are in their 60s, 70s. They are retired. They brought their RV and camped at Thomas's shop and just came out with us. And we're like, yeah, we're going to hang out That's until awesome. we get bored or until we want to go yeah. back. They muscled through the entire 24 oh, hours. They just had a ball. They were sitting there drinking their coffee, making a bonfire, like, you know, chit-chatting. Just like, Dude. how? We are all dying. And there's these seven-year-old people climbing up yeah. mountains and chilling there and doing bonfires. It's also a good time. much lower stress awesome. for them because they're not yeah. actually yeah, behind the battle, you know? But still, I thought that's, it was that's, impressive. That's pretty that, rad. What up? That's imp- Speaking of Thomas, what's the story with that buggy? What are those tires? What buggy? Thomas's buggy. His oh, those are uh, forty-seven TSL LTBs, is what they're called. They're is it uh, these? TSL LTBs, yes. But he, he his are so uh, r- driven, like he has just no tread left, and he. Uh, Okay. Thomas is huge into RC comp crawling. The crazy RC rock crawlers that yeah, go yeah, up yeah. like vertical walls. That's yep. what he does Interesting. as well. And he and cut then... these tires in the same manner as he cuts RC comp hmm. tires, you know, with these tiny little squares. Yeah. And, I mean, he lives out there where it's just bone dry. So, right. honestly, a slick works best. It's the more surface area you huge have, contact the better. Patch. Exactly. Hmm. And there's no mud or slick. Or, like, it's never slick, so you don't have to Dude, worry about it. If that trail had any moisture on it, it would have been... Oh, I don't think it would have mattered. The rock there was so extreme, not just grippy, but, like, violently sharp. Mm-hmm. You wouldn't have felt a difference, I guarantee you. My <laughs> pants from that day are completely ripped. The whole back of them are ripped from <laughs> sitting, on, sitting, <laughs> sitting on rocks. Oh. I don't know if you saw Mac, the redhead that was part of uh helen Beck that was helping people spot he we couldn't put in the video because it was not pg-13 <laughs> but he literally his pants ripped his jeans ripped in two different spots yeah. his whole ass hung out his whole oh, everything man. everything was out until thomas's parents came and brought uh, a spare pair of jeans to the tray because he literally <laughs> le- walks walking around in boxers at a certain point dude you're scaring and the worse children and worse, and worse. <laughs> like the, the, the like if I would say Sand Hollow, if we talk about sandpaper grit, is like a 400, 500. That place was like a 20. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> 40. Oh, like, yeah. Insane. That's crazy. Insane. It's, it's so, also like untouched. So you get, you don't have totally, like, yeah. Sometimes on the really, you know, worn in trails, the rock surfaces get like, correct, you know, worn down. A yes. Bit. Um, no, that was fucking crazy. Was different. So how many, uh, how many video guys do you? have on these because this is a it's not just like you know a group of like a, a youtuber or two going out with the, it's their a full own of media cameras. production bro it's, it's a real deal production yeah we have four we have four cameramen that all shoot on uh exactly the same camera mm-hmm. um that all work together and then i had one guy that did nothing but vertical videos with a phone okay. so like that literally walked around and did iphone content for reels and whatnot and a photographer so six Damn. in total and oh then plus gosh. my ed- my business partner and video editor yanni who's still in germany uh came flying over here for helen Beck, and he's only ever done the arizona helen Beck he was here mm-hmm. for and now that was his second helen Beck that he came in for and he kind of took over like a director role kind of okay. like helped organize the interviews and make sure everything was flowing correctly mm-hmm. whatever so we had a real like 
kind of video director there on set That's as well. Cool. Who edits? Him, my he business does? partner, okay. Yanni. Yeah. Cool. Yanni is back in Germany. He works. He's been working for Warner Brothers for 15 years as an editor. So okay, so and, he uh, might know a thing or two. Know, yeah, he knows a thing or two about yeah. video editing. <laughs> <laughs> Me and him started the channel together. He's been there since day yeah. one. He cut every single video out huh. there. Uh, yeah, wow. is uh, he is a trooper, and he cuts Helen back all by himself. That's in, impressive. Like, that must a very be short amount of time. Fuck ton of video to sort through. Yeah, it's. I mean, it's twenty four hours, five, ca- five cameras. Twenty four. <laughs> Correct, correct. I mean, it's an ungodly amount of footage. Crazy. Um, is this Fair your bite. is this your full time gig? Four. Yes, it's my full time gig at this point. Cool. That's awesome. Yep. That's yep. Crazy. It definitely is cool for sure. Living the dream, man. So, I can't uh, complain. So you can build a, a rig to beat on and write it off. That is the dream, right? Uh, in theory, yeah. <laughs> in I mean, theory. Was, oh, you can write it off. Well, you have to make the money. That's true. You, you have right? to have money. Right. Yeah. That's you can't pay taxes if you That's don't. That's the trigger. You can't pay taxes <laughs> if you don't have money to pay taxes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Correct. fair point. Fair, fair point. Yeah, and like we really, I mean, people always, like, uh, you know, talking about sponsorships and how nice it must be and blah, 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 bro. We pour every dime we make back into this thing, mm-hmm. you know, with the big dream, hopefully one day, to to really make a difference with this and make make enough money that it can that we can all make a good living of it. I take just barely enough out to survive, and mm-hmm. the rest goes all back into this. It's insane. Like we pour so much money. Helen Beck is an expensive project for a YouTube like channel that, like, we did our first Helen Beck with four three thousand subscribers, four thousand subscribers. Like, no money coming back. Right. Right. <laughs> like, yeah, you know, like now finally it's still not it still cost us more than what we put into it but like you know obviously it grows our channel mm-hmm. ra- drastically when it all goes yep. well and so it's worth it and it's just a big passion project of mine i love helen back is it kills me because it's the biggest headache i have all year but i i love i love it like i would never not want to do it and this year we're gonna quadruple up on helen backs i can tell you Ooh. that like we have made some drastic changes in our content schedule and the way we want to do things. And we're so happy with the feedback that we've gotten uh, from this Helen Beck. And just in general, we re-released almost every Helen Beck last year mm-hmm. as a 90 minute video. Instead of five episodes, yep. we, they were, okay. we shrunk them all down into a 90 minute video and re-released all the old ones. And that did phenomenal. Some of them are right before about to hit a million views. And, um, so the feedback has been so good that we're like, you know what, I don't want to kill Helen back and do, uh, you know, five Helen backs a year, mm-hmm. but we're going to do a spinoff okay. of Helen okay. back that we're going cool. to do several times a year, but trying to keep the same quality standard and the same idea, mm-hmm. basically, without it being Helen back. Helen back is a one time a yeah. year thing, but keep like, that on the I would like to, for the people, like, for the people that follow us and subscribe to us because they are Helen Beck fans, I want them to have more to watch than just one show a year. Yep. So we have big plans this year, man. Cool. Like if we can make four Helen Beck style video productions happen, plus build a rainforest challenge Jeep and uh, plus <laughs> hope, fly to Malaysia. Hope, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, we're, we're most likely going to have to skip Malaysia this year because okay. then we're flying. But you know what after, you're you know. getting yourselves into. So. Yeah. Yeah, that's and then awesome. shipping a bit next year, shipping a car to Malaysia, and like that's uh, that's fun. That's gonna be a project in of itself. Shipping yeah. costs still haven't come back down. Yeah, after the and pandemic, it's like, it's a, and it's a two two month trip for the car. Right. Like, yeah. It's a long, 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 long way. Well, it's uh, it's good to hear that you guys are, are building this out even further because I hope so, man. I really like again, and that's the life of a YouTuber, I guess. I'm spitting out my my ideas on what I want to do, mm-hmm. what I'm actually be able to do throughout the year is the year <laughs> will show the more right. companies right. are, you know, supporting us, the more people are watching our videos, the more people are buying our merchandise. That's what makes that happen yeah. at the end of the day. You know, I can sit here all day and tell you from all these crazy ideas. If, if, uh, if uh, the back end, the people don't, don't want to see it, then mm-hmm. it's not happening. You know, Right. Right. Well, yep. I mean, one of the, the good and best things about this whole off-road thing that we uh, we call a hobby or a job or, you know, our, our passion is that the people that are in it are fucking in it. So once, uh, once you find something that draws everybody together like this, it, it's just, it's all in all the time. 
Yeah, I'm very much looking forward. I agree. To, to see I comes. agree. I agree. We. I, I hope I can do this for many, many more years, and we will just got started. You know. Yep. Well, if you guys make it up to the Northeast, I'd love to uh, tag along. <laughs> Should that? Oh yeah. Happen. I mean, we were there last year, or no, two years ago for Hell and Back, yep. and uh, I want to go back. I want to go back to Field and Forest. I would like to go check out some other spots. I'm okay. Definitely. Let me down. know. I uh, I know a few places. <laughs> yeah. Cool. So I don't. <laughs> <laughs> Not in the Northeast, the, at least. The, well, I don't even know them here. The glory of like the Midwest trails is like they're like Kansas is less than one percent public land. Like yeah, it's yeah. all farms and ranches. Like you got to go down to Arkansas. Like, and I haven't been down there enough. Cool stuff. Yeah, there's some cool stuff. Hot Springs in Arkansas. I haven't been there in decades, but it's a cool place, right? And that's also some... why we why I, why I bought the Toyota is just to have more options, like where it doesn't have to be die hard triple triple quadruple black trails mm-hmm. all the time. You know what I mean? Like where we can do easier, like lower smaller, limits, lower yeah. level trails, and still have a blast on it. Yeah. What's the story with the Toyota? Um. Uh. Yeah. The 2022 Helen back. We had Brandon Trump uh, comp- uh take a first gen Toyota to Helen back. And Wasn't left of a Toyota. Yeah. Exactly. And that. But that kind of. I've never been a Toyota guy at all. But I love that <laughs> thing so much. I was like, you know what? I'm gonna look into. I wanted to build a flat fender. I wanted to build like a little yep. sleeper yep. flat fender. But people like there's plenty of people that have done that. So I was like, you know what? I'll take a first gen Toyota and kind of make a sleeper out of it. So now, what the video you see here is its uh, first rendition, and now it, it, we, we've done some stuff to it. It will always—it is on three fifteen tires, so they're like a thirty-two and a half, I think, if you measure them. Uh, uh, three fifteen is like a thirty-two, thirty-three, something like that. Bigger than that, I think three fifteens are like thirty-four and B of change. G came three is the of G okay, always so runs thirty-three smaller. and yeah. change. Yeah, yeah, yeah something yeah. like that. Um, and yeah, they look massive on the little truck. It'll always stay on that size. But we bought the bed now. We built some custom bumpers for it, mm-hmm. custom sliders. Uh, and I would like to do a motor swap on it this year and throw a bigger motor in it, bigger transmit, like just What's really it? make it's the like whole sleeper idea. It's just a twenty R carbureted, twenty R carbureted. Yeah, that's yeah. That and we've taken this thing. I've taken this thing places it really shouldn't have gone with the little twenty R <laughs> and like. Yeah, see the, like the underwater is pop now. Yeah, yeah. No, there's another <laughs> video. I don't know. Should be before or after that. There should be a video of me shooting it up a really steep dirt hill. Those trucks um, are cool. Yeah. They're so light and that thing so is small. awesome. I love that little truck. And I bought it in Sierra. So the whole deal was, but why? It, why I have such a connection to it is, I bought it in Seattle and road tripped it all the way back to Atlanta. So oh my I drove this thing, thirty five hundred miles across country. Sight unseen. Uh, Bought it sight unseen and uh, drove it across country. And be, right right before I drove it across country, I went on a four day snow wheeling trip in Washington. So I bought Ooh. it, drove it from when I bought it straight to this trail and went snow wheeling with it for four days. Christ. Beat the crap out of it in the snow and then drove home 3,500 miles. Yeah. That says something about either your driving Toyota reliability or both. <laughs> It was crazy, you know. man. I mean, the truck broke down every five minutes, and yeah. I was only ba- going fifty miles an hour between Seattle and Utah. <laughs> so it was it was an absolute nightmare trip. But um, it also something I'll never forget. Awesome, cool, awesome adventure. So you have the Jeepster, the Toyota, Jeepster, and the Toyota, and yep, then those two. what's the truck you mentioned? The hauler. Oh, I have a F two fifty just as a as a as a crawler hauler, Is it or a, just uh, as a yeah. Which motor? It's a six seven. Okay. All right, and that's the yep. fleet. There's no. Uh... Yeah, that's it. That's it, and okay. the trailer. That's it. Nice and slow. That is okay. it, and a Jeepster tub just for spare parts because we got a good deal on it. <laughs> and a roof, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Crazy. Yeah, that's pretty much <sighs> it. But yeah, the Toyota. Like I said, we want to at least put we want to put a new motor in it and kind of go over some stuff and just make it more bulletproof and. A little faster and just more reliable and fuel injected and whatnot. And then mm-hmm. the I put a cage in it and uh, maybe have my buddy Alex that painted my Jeepster um, come and paint the Toyota, do something cool with it. And then that's pretty much it, man. And then just go do stupid things with it yeah. and see how far we can push that little truck. That'd be cool. Yeah, you could almost do a series of like, not half scale, but like 
you know that class of vehicle on a on a on the Helen back. Yeah, I found, Helen back, you it's know? just hard to find. It is the kicker, and I don't mean to offend people with that, but a lot of times, like the people that have that are also their wheeling skill matches the truck. Sure. It is very rare that some like it is only it will only be interesting if you take guys that have twenty years of wheeling experience under yeah. their belts and then you put them in they a know small what truck. Doing. That's fun. Yeah. But if yeah. you get somebody that just got into wheeling that just got his first set of thirty three inch tires and you put him in a Helen back scenario, that nobody's gonna have a good time there. You know? <laughs> disaster for everybody. Yeah. yeah exactly. Waste of time. So it is, yeah. It has to be guys that were like, you know, wheeling hard stuff, big Jeeps on 40s or something or buggies and then went back mm -hmm. because, you know, right, that's right. when it it's like the guy cool. that goes and, and races like a spec racing series and then comes back and does lemons. You know, it's yeah, a little different exactly. from the dude whose first time on a racetrack is in a Correct. lemons car, you know. But then it's that 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 would be fun, but it's just not I don't know that many people out there yet that right. like, I don't know, would be. I'm sure not impossible, but that would be cool. But like a lot of people have requested a small tire Helen back. And man, the thing is, it's just not the same. It's like, it, it's like watching underbuilt Jeeps on 37s with wrong gearing and just like Jeeps that aren't, you know, built yet mm. do trails is hard to watch a lot of times, especially if it's, you know, they break a lot Breakage. or, you know, it's yeah. just rock crawling on video is hard to capture anyways Dude, you know right. if you, like the, the stuff that we do at Hallenbeck is five times more extreme than what the video captures angle now, is impossible yeah, to photograph yeah. or get on video <laughs> now imagine that on blue trails or with jeeps yeah. on 35 the only <laughs> the only way you can really get a sense of scale and you know like obstacles is when somebody walks up next to it and is standing next yep. to it and like okay this is a correct a six foot correct. person and an eight foot ledge like when you're like oh correct. okay that that that, that was yeah cool. but yeah otherwise it's like that's true or you take like a uh like a rock at the top of a hill and drop it we always try to have like a tr the tree in a picture or whatever that you have something yeah. for reference you know there's mm -hmm. tricks and tri but uh yeah but i don't know there was one of the videos earlier where the it was a black and gold jeep but as he was going up you could tell he was definitely spinning a lot trying to get traction or whatever and then the rock that looked oh, yeah, like that came spinning out yeah that's an absolutely ultra terrifying that's the king of the hammers Hammer ultra four car actually yeah that's what it looked like, like. <laughs> 700 horsepower that thing was violent that's like and john is crazy for driving something like that on the trail like this like that that car is not a technical car. It has you, like a 3,600 RPM stall in it or something. Yeah, exactly. So it's really, really hard to drive this thing on technical trails. And John drove this thing through the end. And he has, is this, he also did Helen back in Arizona. This is his second time. So cool to see him back. But yeah, car it's, took a beating too, man. Uh, the opposite extreme from like, you know, Thomas's buggy. Yeah, exactly. And <laughs> just seeing, like, we have some pictures where, like, Rudy in the XJ winches out the Ultra 4 car. Like, when mm. have you seen that? You know, like, <laughs> I mean, Rudy's XJ isn't exactly a, a small XJ as no. far as XJs go, but still, it's, it's, yeah, an enormous delta between a hammer's truck and <laughs> anything yeah, that still has exactly. an XJ body. Correct. Crazy. Just cool to see them together do the same trail and see what, where one struggles and the other one doesn't. You know. Yep. Yep. It's a lot of good spotters out there on this uh, on these things. Yeah, we have. Like, that's the thing. We always have skilled people on these trips. Really do. Like in this year, more than ever, I guess. Sure it's good. Like it. We Utah learn a lot. needs it. Utah needs yeah. good spotters. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot, man. So the, my only comment on some of those images I was showing earlier, it looked like everything was broken, but it was just suspension travel. <laughs> mm -hmm. well, yeah, pretty much. Yeah, that's yep. how you know it's working. It's fantastic. I don't. I'm not like the extreme rock hall guy because I, I, I'm generally I'm like I have too much into the, like so. Marvin and I have never met before, so I'm going to tell him the story, Russ. But like, I took my wife's sequoia to moab last year okay like, i put skids like i had a front skid transmission yeah. skid uh, moab, gas tank you run, yeah you can run quite some stuff out there yeah and and literally had people like every time i do an obstacle they would cuss at me 
because they had spent thousands and thousands of dollars into their vehicles to do the exact same thing that I was doing in what is effectively yeah. a soccer mom it's car. It's the nice like, thing about Moab. It's all like, it's kind of like driving on the moon. You don't need a lot of ground clearance and big tires. It's just a lot. Some of these trails are literally just based up on steep inclines and declines. Mm-hmm. And you can theoretically do that in a Porsche Cayenne if you wanted to. Like, it doesn't matter. I you know, 100% so. want to do that too. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, first gen Cayennes are actually good wheelers. Ah, oh, man. I would love one as a daily. I'm really eyeballing here. So, but I don't need more. I don't is need it a, more. Is it a diesel too? Are you looking at diesel first nah, gen Cayenne? No. Okay. I don't think there was a diesel first gen Cayenne. I think there, I don't know there was a no diesel idea. Touareg at the same time. I don't. No idea. That was the V10, right? The V10 well, I would like four eggs. Like that, just to cruise around in, but it's yeah. like I need. I, I, you need no, as much no money you put as your a, money uh, to actual use. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, the, the the maintenance, repair, and like upgrade fund is the same amount as the vehicle fund in that case. Yeah, that's the problem. Like that's the problem with not the problem, but that's just the toll that we pay with what we do. You know, I don't think other than maybe drifting that there's a motorsport that's as hard on parts as what we do. You know, not even drifting. I would say no. Like. Man, Higher budget. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but like demolition derby. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, what's uh, what, we're like brushing up on the end of our time, but what's your dream build? Not just for Helen back, but like for all the wheeling that you would do. I want a buggy, man. I buggy. really want a buggy. I want something really, really violent. I want something that starts. I always say my current setup is the Toyota ends where the jeepster starts okay. the Jeep, and i now i want something that starts where the jeepster ends like okay. more and, rock bouncer or like just actual yeah, like... Kind of, I, i'm an east coast guy i would i'm not a big fan of a straight up rock bouncer mm. but i want something that is a it's a trail buggy trail jeep buggy yeah, front rear that, steer. Is, ha, that has the strength and the power of a rock bouncer okay. where i can rock bounce things without having a rock bouncer yeah. let me put it that way you know what i mean that's yeah. kind of you got to get up like something that, so you just hammer it. there's a company here called uh pcr they're here in atlanta partially committed racing and um <laughs> they're amazing and they build they build <laughs> chassis and buggies they've done a couple of buggies that are going or one particular it's currently around the internet but that is kind of what i'm dreaming of um and to build a car like that uh that is still somewhat jeep ish mm-hmm. but has obviously it's just a, it's a tube chassis but i want it to look like a vehicle and these guys have done a really good job if i can find a pic i had a picture i, got, on my I found phone. some on google yeah but they come a long way and it's like their instagram and social media is terrible Partially so it's hard. Committed. <laughs> yeah, great, P- they're piece them yeah, I'm sure you find them on Instagram or whatever yeah, Chris, but, I'm looking uh, at that same picture that that's it's a really really nice chassis they're really well built really nicely done but uh yeah we'll see everything's I would, hosted I would, yeah. on imager <laughs> yeah that's, and I don't I don't even know but like here I'm gonna throw one in the okay. camera here wait hold on oh, wow. stop the shit. that is a narrow narrow body and chassis with some yeah with a, but like it, has, it's kind of rock bouncer vibes, but looks enough like a jeep. Still has enough paneling around. It has doors, yeah. which for me for filming is crucial, getting in and out all the time. But uh, kind of from the stance wise, it, it almost yeah, looks I like that. ultra four esque. Yeah, it looks like an East Coast ultra four rock bouncer. Okay, that's kind of like <laughs> yeah, that's kind of the best way to put it. Hey, like, best in both worlds. I'm, I'm a huge fan of what these guys are building and I've seen them live. I've seen a couple of them already and like also the owners, their buggies. I've never seen buggies been a, being abused as bad as what these guys are doing and they're holding up to it, man. So Okay, so that's hopefully that's one day, man. I've been yeah. talking about it for a long time, but the problem is it's like you think a Jeep build is expensive, bro. Like a buggy of buggy. that kind, like and especially if you have intentions where it's like I want it to start where the Jeepster ends, bro. You're looking at serious serious money everything's um, custom um, there's everything. nothing off the shelf aside from yes maybe you know axles yeah and no not even those like everything at the end of the day will be custom of some sort you know so yeah pay to play man that's uh that's the, that's the world that's, huh? the, that's the dream right now is to build something like that okay. that's pretty cool <laughs> maybe gonna... after the rfc car you can do a really funny bit where it's uh it's like a pretend 24 Allen back. It's 24 seconds of just RC crawling bashing up oh, something. Yeah. yeah. 
that 24 was, minutes. I, I, 24 minutes. On 24 Alabama. minutes. Thought on about that. That before. Yeah. If you can that get our sea guys are so much into scale that they want to do 24 hours too. So like I, I talked to RC guys about that before and they were like, no, no, we need to do the 24 hours too. Okay. No, thank you. <laughs> 24 days. <laughs> yeah. 24 hours yeah. of hiking. That is. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. I, you wouldn't I fall asleep, know. Ross, if you're always hiking. Yep. <laughs> Hard pass. Oh, so. That's great. Cool. Cool. Uh, I'll wrap up the show. You can rate and review wherever you listen to podcasts. You can like and subscribe on YouTube. It was live tonight. That was that was fun. Uh, turn, turns out maybe we're figuring that out. Uh, you can follow Marvin. It's at Flex Rocks Rollovers everywhere. Instagram, Facebook, everywhere. YouTube. Uh, yep. Follow Hooniverse, the real Hooniverse on Instagram. Ross is no not like the one from Friends. I'm at Overlanding Dad. And we did a show. Marvin, it was great to meet you. Thank you Thanks, so much, Marvin. man. Thanks for having me, guys. Appreciate it. Was it. A good time. Dude, my favorite part of the show is now I have a whole bunch of more YouTube content to go watch. <laughs> 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 be terrified of. <laughs> yep. Yeah.